Why is my banner so boring? Hmm. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's April Lynn. In this video, I'll teach you how to create a stunning YouTube banner that works perfectly across all devices, even if you don't have any design experience. For this tutorial, we'll be using Figma. Figma is a free web-based design tool, and I use it for making YouTube thumbnails, YouTube banners, really any other design assets. If you don't have it yet, just go to figma.com and create an account. You can work directly through your web browser, but I prefer working in the desktop app. YouTube banner images are a bit trickier to create than typical social media banner images. This is because unlike other banner images, your YouTube banner looks different depending on what device it's being viewed on. This is what my YouTube banner looks like on mobile, this is what it looks like on a computer, and this is what it looks like on a TV. Because of the dynamic banner dimensions, creating a YouTube banner isn't as simple as just uploading a long image to your YouTube studio. You have to ensure that your banner looks decent irrespective of which device it's being viewed on. To help you out with this, I have a template you can use. After you have Figma downloaded, head on down to the video description and click on the YouTube banner template. You may be directed to log into your Figma account. With the Figma file open, go to the top banner where you'll see the downward caret and click duplicate to your drafts. A dialog box will open in the bottom of your screen saying that the file has been duplicated to your drafts. Open up the file. At this point, you can rename the file to anything you like. Then you can start to edit. Let's talk through what you see here. There's one blank frame here if you'd like to start from scratch, a template banner that you can easily customize, and an example banner to show you what banners from this template could look like. Let's go down the template so I can show you how to fully customize it. So the big rectangle you see here is your frame. It's like the picture frame where your banner will go. All of the assets, your text, shapes, and images will be housed inside of your frame. If we go over to template banner in the sidebar on the left and click the caret, you can see the expanded view of your frame. Here you can see all of the assets in your frame. You can see there's a few assets here. The most important one I wanna point out to you first is the devices grid. This is how you're going to make sure that your YouTube banner looks perfect regardless of what device is being viewed on. The smallest rectangle in the middle is what shows on a mobile device, the entire middle rectangle is what shows on a computer, and the rectangle as a whole is what shows on a television. First, let's set the primary background color of your banner. What color do you feel best represents the vibe and feel of your YouTube channel? This is a big decision to make. Your banner is the first thing viewers see when they land on your channel page, and it's a huge part of your channel's overall brand and aesthetic. A well-designed banner can convey your channel's niche, personality, and vibe in just a few seconds, and color selection is a huge component of that. If you already know your colors, that's great. But if you're still deciding, coolers is a great place to start. You can scroll through their trending color palettes and see which one speaks to you, or you can just generate new color palettes. If you have a specific color you like, you can lock it and then generate more colors that work well with it. Once you know what color you want to use for the background of your banner, select the template banner frame by clicking on it. You'll see a blue outline around the entire frame with the dimensions around it. Navigate over to the panel on the right down in the fill section. Click on the color code and use the sliders to find any color you want. Alternatively, you can directly paste in your color code. If you want your background to be a gradient, simply go to the drop down in the top right of the color panel and select linear. From there, you can drag the boxes in the frame to determine the direction of the gradient and select the boxes in the color panel to determine the color of the gradient. You can use the dropper to select any color that's being currently used in the document. For now, I'm just gonna stick with a solid color. After you have your background color set, let's adjust your accent color. Navigate over to the main text group, which is comprised of a text box and a rectangle. With the group selected, navigate on the sidebar on the left and select the rectangle. With the rectangle selected, head over to the sidebar on the right in the fill section and set your color. With your background and accent color set, let's adjust your text. First, navigate over to the main text group, which is composed of a text box and a rectangle in the back. With the group selected, double click to select the text box and double click again to highlight the text. From there, you can type in your main text or header text. Usually your channel name works well here. I like the look of all caps in a banner, but that's just me. For my name, the current main text group fits. But let's say my channel name was just April in. Looks a bit strange, yes? To adjust the group, make sure you have the entire group selected by navigating to the main text group in the side panel on the left and selecting it. Then use your mouse to click and drag the right side of the box over to the left until there's a more aesthetic amount of padding. Alternatively, let's say your channel name is too long. You don't wanna make the entire group longer. Remember, only the inner middle rectangle shows up on mobile devices. You don't want any of your banner to be cut off. 
Instead, with Adjust Your Text selected, navigate over to the panel on the right side to adjust the text size. You can make the text size small enough so that your entire channel name fits. The panel on the right is also where you can adjust other text attributes, such as its font or weight. Maybe instead of this font, you want to use this one or this one. Depending on the text you select, you'll also see options to change the boldness or add italics. If we move a little bit lower, you can also see an option to change the color of your text. Simply click the fill box and change the color to whatever you want to. After we have your main text, it's time to adjust your subtext. To do so, simply double click into your subtext text box and type your subtext. This can be a tagline that relates to your niche. For example, I could type, let's learn YouTube. The same deal applies here too. You can change your font, boldness, and italics if you want. And if your tagline is too long, you can either make the text smaller or just allow it to fill into two lines. If you want to adjust the positioning of anything in this template, simply select it and drag it with your mouse or use your up, down, left, and right arrows. If you want to move more than one element at the same time, you can either hold down the shift key as you select them or simply click and drag a selection box around them. Once you're happy with the positioning of your text, let's turn our attention to the left side of your banner. This is where you can add in any pictures. To add a picture, go to File and Place Image. Select your image and place it anywhere. Depending on how large your picture is, you may have to reduce the size of your image. To change the dimensions of your picture while retaining its aspect ratio, either drag the corners with the shift key selected or go to the top of the panel on the right with the portion ratio locked and change the height or width manually. After you have your picture, let's put it into the mask I created for it. Place your image above the first image group. Then on the sidebar on the left, drag your image within the first image group right above where it says picture goes here. Your picture should show up within the square border. From there, with your picture selected, you can further adjust it to fit. If you want to change the color of the square border with the image group selected, navigate to where it shows up on the sidebar on the left and select white outline. From there, go to the sidebar on the right under stroke and change the color to whatever you like. If you'd like to, you can repeat this process with another picture in the left picture frame. This time, after dragging your image above the image group, go into the top of the sidebar on the right and change the angle to 8.5 degrees. Then repeat the process, dragging the picture into the second image group in the sidebar on the left and repositioning and resizing if needed. Don't forget to hold down the shift key as you resize. Once again, you can select the outline in the sidebar on the left and change the color under stroke on the right if you want. If you don't like the look of a double picture, you can opt for an icon instead. I like using flat icon for my icons. Go to flat icon and choose an icon that represents your niche. Download it and add it to Figma by going to File and Place Image. If you want to, with the image selected, click Fill on the sidebar on the right to adjust the image setting. With this YouTube logo, I'll increase the exposure to lighten up the red hue of it. With your icon within your frame, you can position it wherever you want to. I'll change the angle a bit on the right. To change the order of which asset is in front, simply drag your asset to the correct order in the sidebar on the left. I want this icon to go underneath my image group, so I'll drag it down. Once you've added all your assets to your banner, you can reposition everything as needed. Just remember to keep everything that's important inside of the inner rectangle. You can add other elements to the left and right if you'd like them to show up in the desktop view, but they won't be visible on mobile. Once you have everything in place, congratulations! You have your new YouTube banner. Before you add it to your YouTube channel, remember to hide the device's grid. You can do so by selecting the little eye icon next to it on the left sidebar. Then, making sure you have your entire frame selected, click the plus by the export section of the sidebar on the right. Make sure the file type is a PNG or a JPG, then click export. Alternatively, you can go up to Figma sign, file, export. Go back to your YouTube studio under customization branding, add your new banner image, and admire the new look of your channel page. Next, it's time to make sure that your YouTube background looks just as attractive as your new banner. To learn how to create a YouTube-worthy studio space, no matter the size of your space or wallet, check out this video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you can, and I will see you in the next video.